The idea of building or crafting items using different parts that you have found or collected is a concept oldest time in video games. However, its introduction into Call of Duty Zombies has definitely had its highs and lows. Today we're going to take a casual look back to the very lowest of lows. The first map to ever feature buildables was of course Transit, and it was very bad to say the least. Transit really tried to add buildables to every square inch of this map. There was a total of 8 different things to build, with a total of 25 different parts scattered around this giant zombies map. The first disgraceful buildable that that needs to be talked about is the electric trap. All the parts for this is in the power area of this map and when you put it all together it makes this ugly looking contraption that sits on the ground like a bump on a log. The absolute main drawback to all of these transit buildables and later the buried ones as well is that for some reason you need a turbine to power them up to make them work. Which is a huge deal considering how easily the zombies can just turn and completely obliterate your turbine. To make matters worse if if you want another turbine you gotta go all the way back to the bus depot to keep your trap running. On top of this major drawback that pretty much already makes the trap effectively useless, especially in solo, is that the trap itself is just so inconsistent at actually killing zombies. I'm not sure what the thought process was here of the transit developers, but the electric trap definitely could have been executed much better. The brother of the electric trap, the lawnmower turret, is equally as useless, but you can definitely make an argument that the automatic LMG is even worse. To build the lawnmower turret, a player needs three parts. This time, all the parts can be found in the farm area. The main flaw of the turret is the same as the electric trap. You need a turbine to power it up. I would say that the turret it, however actually has the potential to be a more reliable way of killing zombies. The second major atrociously bad design flaw of the lawnmower turret honestly makes me question the sanity of the people behind it. The turret has the potential to deal player damage if you get caught in the crossfire, so you'd have to be a little insane to actually want to use this in your game. The risk just isn't worth the potential gains. The next major miss when it comes to Black Ops 2 Zombies buildables is the nav card table. Now I will say that I think something like the nav card table would work much better on modern consoles where progress saves to your account instead of your console itself. What I mean by this is in Black Ops 2 you build the nav card table on all three Victus maps and insert the nav card from the previous map in order to set yourself up for the final super easter egg in Victus's finale map Buried. Unfortunately though this system is an absolute train wreck. The Victus maps require four players to complete the easter egg meaning that all four players in the game must have all three nav card tables built and all three nav cards inserted properly. On top of the excessive nature of this tedious task, there's an issue that arises that the person hosting the game has to host the game every time you go back in and play. With the natural issues and confusion surrounding how the nav card system actually works, it's safe to say that the whole thing was a flop, but I wouldn't mind more things carrying over from map to map in the future. The next map I wanted to talk on specifically is Barry. Buried has what is by far the most unique buildable system in the entire history of zombies. Although Buried does have the terrible Black Ops 2 system of A, only being able to carry one part at a time, and B, there's no shared inventory, both of which would be an issue if it weren't, of course, for Leroy. Leroy can go and build anything you want him to, which is a definite improvement from previous maps, but still just not quite as convenient as being able to carry more than one part yourself. The entirety of of Black Ops 3 didn't really have any buildables that were worthy of making the cut for this video, so that brings us to Black Ops 4. Dead of the Night has been known for having too many parts and collectibles, and the number one culprit for this is the Silver Bullet Dispenser. First, a player must find three silver parts scattered throughout the mansion. Each part has three different spawn locations. Once collected, you need to take them down into the wine cellar to melt silver, which in reality is just another part needed to be collected. Collected. Then you gotta traverse the map and find three more parts, each with their own set of three spawn locations for a grand total of 18 different spawn locations for one buildable. Then you can finally go into the library and craft your silver bullet dispenser, giving you silver bullets. These bullets deal extra damage to werewolves and vampires, which is a nice quality of life thing, but it's just hard to justify all the effort that you just put into crafting them. In your opinion, what's the worst buildable in the history of Call of Duty? zombies and watch this video here if you want to see me rank every map in Call of Duty Zombies history.